Live from the Austin Convention Center in Austin, Texas, it's The Cube at Dell World 2014. Here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Hi, everybody. We're back. Uh, Dell World 2014 is wrapping up. They're, they've shut down the exhibit hall, but we're still going live here at theCUBE. Peter Bookman is here, uh, entrepreneur, co-founder of V3 Systems, former Fusion IO. Uh, Peter, great to see you again. Thanks for having me. So I ran into the other day here at Dell World. We're walking the floor. It's always you know, great to see you. So what about Dell World? What's happening here? Oh, this is exciting. This is my first Dell World, but it, it, it absolutely is game changing. The energy is awesome. It, it, I, I felt like the, key, the partner keynote opened it up really well of that this is a change Dell for partners, which is what I'm experiencing. I've, I've not experienced this kind of energy and level in the past, and, and this is awesome. So, you know, the big theme that we've talked about, one of the big themes this week is, is in addition to the transformation of Dell, is the privatization of Dell. We are just yeah. talking to Michael Dell about that. As a, as a company that does business with Dell, as a partner of them, have you noticed a change? Oh yeah, the, you know, I, as a serial entrepreneur, I've done a lot of deals, and I've worked with Dell in the past. You know, we, we I, I sold a company that became Sonic, that to Sonic Wall, that right. became a obviously Fusion, and uh, in the past, Dell has been very, very great. But it, it's not exactly known for its agility. It's, it's let's put something together and get something done really, really fast. Uh, and from our perspective, and what we're seeing is. Uh, we're transitioning and being able to leverage Dell so fast that just about no other initiative or partnership is able to keep up really right now. I don't know if you were able to hear the, the Michael Dell interview. I, we, I asked him one of John Furrier's questions. Is if you're in the dorm room back, you know, if you're 18 years old, 2014, he, he said, I'd be building something. I'd be doing some startups. I mean, mm -hmm. what's it like out there? I mean, you're I say, a serial entrepreneur. Have you ever seen a, a, a better time, an easier market entry, although that has brings competition, um, what, what, how would you summarize the innovation world? I, I, I think it's a, an innovator's opportunistic world. It's, it's, there's so many problems to solve and it's never been as frictionless as it is for anybody to solve a problem. The tools are there, you know, with the cloud, this simply makes it so you pay for what you use. Uh, it means that you pay to solve the problem and then you're in the market, it's, it's awesome. Are you solving a problem? It's that fast, that easy. So it's really exciting. So what are the customers telling you? Where do they where do they need help? Where do you see those opportunities? Um, well, I mean, as Sphere, what we have is this application containerization technology for Windows. Uh, Sphere acquired V3 systems that has the distributed virtual desktop technology for hyperconverged appliances. Uh, what we're showing here actually is was a solution to a customer need. Uh, there's a lot of drive at Dell with uh, with with Google for Chromebooks for education. Um, and a real problem with what do you do about the legacy applications. So using our glassware technology, we, uh, it was attempted to, with a Dell Vertex, really cool server platform, uh, to deploy as many of a single education-based app as they could, and it was quite limited using traditional hypervisor type technologies. Uh, over on, at our booth over here, we've been showing, and we started at zero every day, and have end of the day at over 7,000 concurrent sessions running on a Vertex, which to me seems pretty amazing if you know the platform. Yeah. <laughs> it's so... yeah, Peter, can you give us a little flavor? You know, What's the customer vibe at the show here? What kind of conversations? You know, Usually, this show to me, it's my third year being here. It's going through a little bit of transition. When I first came two years ago, it was really business, kind of CIO, uh, you know, a lot of suits. They had Bill Clinton here. Last year they had Elon Musk. Wow. Um, and they're starting to pull in a lot of the, more the user group uh, event. The next year, uh, my understanding, the Dell Enterprise Forum fully mm. wraps into here. So I expect, you know, more trainings and labs and things like that. What, what's the kind of customer base? Is it, you know, you know business, technical? Uh, what are they excited about? I, I, I've, I've definitely heard that and seen that. And I think that vibe is really clear. Uh, what I'm seeing and what we're seeing is there this, I, I don't have a lot of experience with uh, previous Dell Worlds, but I, my observation is there's a lot of partner opportunities here. Uh, in fact, I, I was commenting that this is, this is at the top of my list at this point for partner ecosystems, partners to talk to, whether that's partners that we you know, value add or add something to the flavor or uh, Sphere technology plus Dell plus something else uh, allows us to go do something together very rapidly. 
uh, the theme for me is partner ecosystem that can move really rapidly. It's it's really impressive. So, so it, it, can you unpack that a little? You know, why why Dell? Is it you know does the other server guys either compete or don't have the channel in reach or you know what? It, why is it that Dell is the one that is number well, one for you? You know, I was standing right here, but I really couldn't hear a lot of what was being said. But I, I, it seems a lot, a lot like there's a lot of effort being put into that, and that's felt. That's easy to see. Top down. Uh, the partner ecosystem is important. The, it seemed to me that all the announcements made uh, over the course of Dell were, were, were very partner-centric. So there's a big energy top-down that, that bleeds really well into, do you have something to offer uh, that Dell can help you with as a partner that we can go collectively go do something together? I had that huge list that I was reading off when I was walking around, I bumped into you the other night. It's just, it astounds me how much stuff Dell Mm -hmm. Dell has and what they've amassed. I mean, have transformed from a PC company. And <clears throat> but I, it, you know, I'm not an M&A guy. But mm -hmm. and you've sold a bunch of companies. There's always white spaces <laughs> always. to fill. And uh, but but I still got a. I'm quite amazed at the portfolio that the company's put together. I guess you know it's one thing to spend 13 billion. It's another thing to actually spend it on things that customers need and to be able to integrate it in a way. Where do you put Dell? I mean. IBM, obviously very good at acquisitions. Oracle, very good at acquisitions. EMC's had some blockbusters and does, seems to be a, do, do well at integrating them. Microsoft pretty well, I guess Intel too. Dell's right up there, but how would you sort of you know, handicap the horses? Of, in you terms you of know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, so tweet away, but you know, my, my observation is, I honestly wonder if everybody isn't envying Michael Dell at this point. You know, he's obviously a visionary anyway, but everybody else is shedding resources and having to. And Dell, as you're saying, gets to stay end to end. I was talking to a Dell executive yesterday who was jokingly saying, we're very comfortable in this world where I know what I'm good at, and therefore we're great for partners. And what I'm good at is hardware and software. Uh, and then they said, and then the funny part is we continue the dialogue and they say, uh, well, hardware, software, and services. Well, hardware, software, and as you're describing, the list goes on, right? Um, but I think that uh, that being able to be end-to-end -end and play such a vital role, for example, again, in education with Chromebooks, I don't know what other people are able to do, but it seems to me like everybody else is kind of in a handicapped position uh, because Dell has so many offerings. Uh, and has the agility of effectively a private company now. I think people way underestimated Dell. Um, you know, trying to sort of position them as, as not relevant. And and Dell, Michael Dell in particular, just sort of weathered that storm, and mm -hmm. now it's like this Cheshire cat. It does I got this, <clears throat> this, <laughs> this giant company that's now energized, <laughs> and I got, I'm throwing off <clears throat> probably more cash, he won't, he won't say, but I bet you they're throwing off more cash now as a private company than they ever had. He sort of hinted to that. <clears throat> he said his costs today of servicing the debt are lower, <clears throat> excuse me, than they were when he had to buy back stock and do mm -hmm. dividends. So that says to me, he was hinting, he didn't say it, you know, but my inference is they, they've got, they're throwing up more cash. So I think you've got this, they're not sleeping, they're a yeah. giant mm -hmm. that's actually much more nimble. So it's going to be really interesting to see. And meanwhile, Peter, you've got these big companies just getting pulled apart. Yeah. You know, you're seeing Symantec split up, you're seeing HP split up, you're seeing pressure on EMC to, to split up, even not just enterprise tech, but eBay and PayPal really interesting dynamics. They're all driven by the sort of short-term financial Absolutely. gain. Then, on the other end of the spectrum, your, your world, the startup world, you got startups that are sort of delaying IPOs, right? They're yeah. raising, like Cloudera raises 750 million from Intel, which forestalls an IPO. Amazing. Um, in, Andreessen writes an article saying it basically, you know, sucks being a public company. What do you see there um, in startup land? I mean, you're living it now um, in terms of, you know, exits, is it is it IPO? Do people not want to go public? Are we ever going to see another big, you know, company emerge from the, the startup world? Oh, I, I think absolutely. I mean, this, this is one of those, I mean, I think we're one of them. You know, this is uh, this is one of those things where when you solve a problem, I, I would define the world we live in as volatile. Uh, and hmm. that's neither good nor bad, that just is. is. <laughs> uh, and, and if you can leverage it, it's great. You know, I, I love surfing. And one of the things that I learned early on in surfing is the first wave is almost never the one you want to catch. Uh, so if you're lucky, and surfing is a great example of it, you can hang out and watch the waves, you can understand and gauge the waves, and through partnerships and the volatility, I think the sky's the limit as to what kind of an exit do you want, because there's lots of exits, you know, people who will uh, buy you out, buy out portions, 
you know, I'm, a, I'm accustomed to a standard kind of venture capital policy where uh, as founders at a certain point they want to de-risk you, so to speak, and you get some portion taken care of anyway. Uh, so whether you go IPO, whether you exit to somebody, whether you, uh, you know, go and stay private and very, 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 you know, just to me it's about being able to win uh, and that will take on an independent strategy for each, each startup company and will probably change depending upon the market conditions over time. Well, Michael Dell always, everything, any conversation you have with Michael Dell always reverts back to the customer, mm -hmm. right? When you have a conversation with entrepreneurs, it always reverts back to the customer. Now, it doesn't always with investors, but, but entrepreneurs and founders, you know, you know that you really got to have three things, right? You got to have ha great, happy customers, you got to have, you have happy employees, and you got you, you to gotta make some money, you know, no doubt. But if you do those three things, you're going to succeed, right? I mean, it's really that, that's simple. All right, I'll give you the last word. What, uh, what's next for you guys? Oh, we have a lot coming. I mean, we we have the eminent close of Oberlin Storage uh, that'll add our, to our portfolio a lot of uh, storage offerings that have yet to be announced. Uh, we have uh, a, a lot of good opportunities we'll be seeing uh, from a use case case study perspective that we've done to collectively with Dell uh, and we continue to work on. Uh, so from the moving things to the cloud in a componentized way uh, that can be utilized however we want to, mm -hmm. Uh, I think we're just getting started. I think from a, this DevOps phenomenon that was a theme here uh, is just really beginning to be understood that operationally, those who control the workflow are just getting involved with IT and being able to uh, take web services and applications that are containerized and desktops and virtual desktops and be able to integrate workflow into all of that and that's a, a huge transformation we're seeing. Yeah, the DevOps piece is interesting. Dell software business, which doesn't get a lot of play in airtime, it's a multi-billion dollar software business, so mm -hmm. we're watching that as well. Peter, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and uh, you know, sharing what's going on with you guys and, uh, and, and sharing your thoughts on Dell. Thank you guys very much. Good to see you again. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live, still from Dell World 2014.